the Nikki Glazer podcast. Here's Nikki. Hey, everyone. It's the Nikki Glazer podcast. It is Thursday. It's an all Fran- Fanthrax episode. We'll get to that in just a list. Blah, 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 blah. It's an all Fran Leibowitz. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Anya does the best impression of Fran Leibowitz I've ever heard. And she was talking about going through COVID. She was talking about being in a relationship. And someone was interviewing Fran Leibowitz and said, um, you know, you're going through COVID alone. She was like, I can't imagine going through COVID with someone. I am so lucky to be alone. <laughs> and it was just like, it was, and Anya was talking about how she never gets lonely. Like she loves being alone. She loves being in a relationship with Matt, but that if Matt's ever gone, Anya's never felt loneliness, which is hilarious because I'm here with Carlisle Forrester and Andrew Collin, of course, but Carlisle Forrester is staying with me for a week Tomorrow she's leaving. I'm leaving as well. We're going back to L.A. But um, three days into this, uh, one day I walked out into the living room and she was here and she was just looking a little sad. And I was like, hey, girl, what's up? And she was just like, I'm just like really homesick. And I was just like, (laughs) what is happening? She was like, I just feel like really like just I miss home. You, I, I'm scared to leave you alone. I know. You get well, lonely. I've been gone a long time. I went home way too long for Christmas. You look so pretty right and now, then, by the way. Thank you. You look pretty I just see a floating head. Why? Oh, because the yellow background. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a green screen for y'all. You guys got to check it out on the YouTube. You look like a fat head that's skinny. No, <laughs> I, took, uh, I took too long for the holidays, in my opinion. And then I basically came straight here. Yeah. So I just like missed my dog. And you were sick with Coco. Yeah. In between those times. And so, and you had a really, like, you were sick with your boyfriend. And you said that you really like bonded with Chase, like in that time. Yes. And then I had to immediately leave him. And I just feel like I haven't That's done nice. like comedy in a long time because I was gone. Even though so I'm, you like, killed missing. the other night, the funny, we went to the funny bone. Um, Stuart Huff, who you got to go see. He's so hilarious. Funny. He's a road comic that no one's ever heard of, but like, it's it's criminal that there are some people out there that are this funny that mm-hmm. you're just like, why has no one heard of him? So yeah. Stuart Huff, see where he's going if he's coming to a local comedy club because he plays like the comedy club circuit. Got to go see him. Got to go so, check him out. So, so funny. Like my face hurt from laughing. My lungs great. hurt from laughing. It's laugh. crazy how funny there are people. Yeah. I'm thinking about pitching um, a stand-up series called Nikki Glazer's Favorite Comics You Haven't Heard Of that is just like, I think that would be a cool thing where it's like, these are names that you can introduce, giving people something where it's like, you will know this person before everyone does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're not necessarily like young people, but they're people that have like, that are fucking great Kevin Hart there. did something similar to that. I'm not was saying Was it called that, that? Yeah, it was called Nikki Glazer finds <laughs> Kevin Hart's favorite comedian. That is so funny. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I no, think a lot of comedians have I'm done not, that. I'm not saying, I'm not shitting on the idea. I'm saying, no, it was good. But, you know, it was like, it's cool. You find like local own. talent. That, well, just like talent that is yeah. just, that is waiting to be seen. There's so many comics that I'm like, this person should be so much more famous than I and am. And so many people were coming up to him after the show and being like, uh, yeah, I've never heard of you before, but that was great. It's like, that's not really a comment. You know the problem like, is? Stop saying that. You know, it's because we leave the show and we go, why isn't he famous? Like me, Chris, and Carla were all like, what is the deal here? And, you know, it's it's more than just like, oh, no one likes white men anymore. Or, you know, there can be like he had he has a kid that he has to be accountable for. Did he, he has, does he live, live in L.A. or New he York? He lives no. in Athens, Georgia. He at one time probably yeah. did. And I think he's going to be at the Atlanta punchline soon. If yeah, he's there. so funny. But, um, you know, there's there's a lot of things. And, and this isn't to say of him, but in cert- there's certain people out there that are so fucking talented and I and they're so much funnier than I will ever dream of being. Like they're some of the funniest people that you'll truly never know about because they self sabotage with drinking, drugs, just it kids. I mean, my ex boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, kids. Well, I mean, sure, kids like marrying drugs. someone who is going to keep them out of it and, and yeah. so they'll always have an excuse for why they didn't make it, you know? And some people are truly scared to get the recognition. And what, what fame is, is love. Like, we're all going after this love that we want that we didn't get as kids. That's what my, you know, diagnosis is for most comedians. And I would say comedians more so than actors. But mm-hmm. And then when you, when you start getting famous, you start to feel that love. And it's fucking terrifying because you don't think you deserve it. 
And so you do something to keep it away because it it isn't real love, but it starts to feel like it. Like even I self, when I started getting a little bit more notoriety, I started smoking a lot more weed because I'm like, I want to fuck this up. I want to, mm -hmm. I, this is getting too easy for me. People seem to like me too much and I need to make them realize they shouldn't like you self-sabotage. So I think that's what happens to some people is they do something that'll make it so they don't succeed my ex-boyfriend is one of the best uh like the my first boyfriend one of the best comedy writers i'll ever know mm -hmm. one of the best joke writers ever whenever i do roast i oh it's the only time i talk to him now i just write to him and he now doesn't even i don't think he does comedy anymore but i'll write to him and say hey i'm doing a roast can you write me jokes and i use more of his jokes than anyone's jokes that i have ever mm -hmm. used and his, his name is jeff wesselschmidt and he's, you can find his clips online, but he, so, for some reason, isn't as fame. He never made, and I, I don't know what it was, but I think there was something in him that was like, I don't deserve, because he would always, he would, he would do a set for a showcase, and then he would do jokes that were just alienating, that would like make the back of the room yes. laugh, and he would throw a set under the bus when he really just, I knew he, he has, he has the potential to be as good as anyone. He, and, his, his look is a little like, um. I don't know exactly how to explain Skinhead? it. Skinhead? Yeah, like school shooter-ish. Yeah. But, and then on top of that, he has very dark jokes. So it's like, it's it's hard as a regular, a, like, yeah. as like a regular f audience member to like wrap your head around. Like, but I, when we when I'd be at open mics, I mean, he was like a legend. Like, he, I mean, it, it legend. just. That's why yeah. I fell in love with, like, yeah. I, that's why I was like, when I saw him in the St. Louis scene, I'm like, that guy is the funniest person I've ever heard. He's so funny. Uh, I just mean, a genius, uh, you know just the best joke writer there is and um I was so envious of his mind and the fact that he thought I was funny just was such like a fucking bad yeah, yeah and so but there's certain people that you just have never heard of and I think and I relate to it and I think I could be more successful than I am but I've just there's a part of me that doesn't I maybe it's an excuse but I there's a part of me that's holding back a little bit because I don't feel like I deserve it or something mm -hmm. like I I think there's that, but anyway, I wanna I wanna do something like that. that and I think it's a job of a comedian. To, that it is it totally. If you've is. had success, it's it's a job of yours to introduce new people. And I mean, that's how I, have, I found you. That's yeah. how I became your super fan is because I saw you on that Amy Schumer thing. Oh yeah, women who kill. Oh right. Uh, and I, it was on. And you're a woman that kills people. <laughs> and you're <laughs> related a lot. Who dreams of killing? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I have so many good stories about Carlisle that. I need, oh I've God. written them into shows, but the other night I brought her on stage. She, by the way, you killed the other night. Funny, oh, that's great. Carlisle has gotten so good at comedy because she is working at Supernova, which is the show in LA that you should absolutely go check out and support that place because hey, and that if place you're pays bestie, the comics. It, yes, they pay the comics. Oh yeah, and tell the besties before. what you said. If you're a bestie, please DM me because, and if you're going to be in the LA area or if you live in the LA area, you can come to a show for free if you're a bestie. Just hit me up. I'll put you on my guest list. It and is, you don't have to pay for tickets. And you get amazing headliners on Every town. show, there's a good headliner because they pay Several. their comedians really, really well. Yeah. Several. <laughs> Call back. <laughs> thousands. That Man. could be upwards of thousands. It's a long show. It's a long show. <laughs> yeah. But it's a really it, cool it show, and especially in the warmer, even in the winter. No, we still, have heaters now. Yeah, it's great. Whenever I go up on stage, I'm like hot. It's my from favorite all the place to perform. Have. And, um, in LA, no offense to the store and the improv, but it just is. It it's the only place I like call in spots to really when I'm in town now. But you had a set the other night. It was so fucking good. I'm so excited to po possibly do a show where I get to curate the talent because introducing the world to Carlisle will be like. I mean, I've already done it on the podcast and stuff. You're welcome. But like, <laughs> I um, but you you were so funny the other night. I'm really proud of how good at comedy you've gotten Thank because you. you you used to get up just sporadically and you would come out really hot and be like, yeah. hey, y'all. Hey. Like, and she, <laughs> scream. she Nikki scream. broke me of this yeah. habit where I would just be so loud and it's like, girl, you it have was, a mic in your hand. Like, you're good. Well, you were trying to be someone other than yourself. You were trying to be an MC. You're trying to be... Well, I hosted open mics for my first yeah, two that's years. Hard. But it's, hard. And it gave me these bad habits yeah. of like keeping the energy up yeah. and like keep, you know what I mean? So... It, it, it's now I can just go up and do the trick to comedy and everything. And, and if you're starting out, skip that whole thing of trying to be someone else. Like, just say whatever's true in that moment. And like, yeah, if 
if you're not excited to host a show and you got to host a show, you got to kind of bring it and yeah. just like pretend you are. But w- you're already an excitable person. And so when you go on stage, I was just, you just were so loud and like your energy was like manic in a way that, you know, and I'm not this. I used to do the same fucking thing where I, you know, I pretended to be Sarah Silverman for years and then I pretended yeah. to be Amy Schumer. And then like I'm all over the place yeah. and s- some of that still remains in my act. But um, I was so impressed with you the other night. And Thanks, uh, girl. That's awesome. it I'm was gonna really good. She had new jokes up, um, that I was like, I didn't even know these jokes. I'm going to put that whole setup on TikTok, I think, if anybody wants to. The whole set. <laughs> yeah, follow her on TikTok. <laughs> I mean, it's only, it's only uh, you know, a couple What minutes. was I saying about so, this? Um, yeah, you were hilarious. Oh, yeah. So I brought her up, on, or she brought me. No, she went up, and then t- Tim Convey, who's also fucking hilarious and gotten so good, uh, my quasi-boyfriend's brother, Tim Convey, uh, he brought me up and then I got to tell a couple Carlisle stories and it was nice because they like already knew her and I got to tell the the you know handful of ones and I'm always reluctant to tell them because they kind of reveal some dark <laughs> things about you but I think those oh are the God. things that are best about you is that you are a dark bitch. What's yeah. the best one you think? Yeah, The best one that I've told. The suicide one? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I mean this goes hand in hand with one. So we were at this festival called Kaboo. Yep. And it was awesome. It was during Dancing with the Stars and Carlisle and I got real close during Dancing with the Stars. She was my assistant. She lived with me. We were like in it to win it, (laughs) in it to lose it. (laughs) And (laughs) it was just such a good time. And she was so supportive and such a wonderful friend. So supportive that that I didn't have your bag packed whenever you were voted off, which was my one job. I was going (laughs) to succeed. No, she really amazing. She was always there with a nice coffee at my practice. It, she was just the best. You dressed me one day when I was injured and I couldn't put on a shirt and I couldn't take off a bra. Like, she yep. was awesome. And I wish I could have gone on longer. I go back to that. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty sexual. I was crying because it was so romantic. Um, I couldn't and, put on my panties and Carlisle. Oh you God. were there for me. I was and it was insane. like. <laughs> The way you plucked my vagina hairs, Carlisle, was just, with your teeth, yeah. was so amazing. <laughs> That's the way I like it done. <laughs> and she, yeah, she's willing to, I, I like all green M&Ms and my uh, pubes plucked with her teeth. <laughs> I just, that's, that's just the way I like it. I'm hey, not being a diva. No one right. said you are. Right. So we were backstage at this music festival and we drove down there. We saw, I saw Blondie in a, um, we saw Halsey. Yeah, we saw Halsey perform. All these. I saw Blondie in a um, hotel nearby when we, we were trying oh. to find the festival and I stopped to go to the bathroom in a hotel and I saw Blondie in the um, Debbie Harry in the lobby. But we get to the thing, I perform. It was the first time I didn't stand up in a while because I was so immersed in Dancing with the Stars. And it was a big show and it was really good. There was a tent of people, usually music festival shows, not fun. I had a great time. Earlier that day, I'd, I'd gone to practice at seven in the morning with Gleb for four hours. Then we drove down, I had a show at two something like that and then get done with my set and I'm in this trailer and we're supposed to we go to Halsey um and we're dancing having the best time it's like my day off from dancing with the stars I'm just like things are going great I had a good practice even though Gleb ripped out some of my hair and I cried um it was all good and um I was trying to convince you to go to Foo Fighters so Foo Fighters are my favorite live performers ever it's how I became a fan was going to their show reluctantly and then I was like this is the best band I've ever seen in my life and so I was so excited yeah um, so we're in this trailer and I, before the Food Fighter show and I, we're this not where talking Carlisle's family live? Yeah, we're in, uh, <laughs> we're in, no, this is where, uh, Noah's, uh, step-by-step crush Cody's. We were in the step-by-step trailer. Call back. If you heard, uh, Ham Drip Ham yesterday. Drip. <laughs> um, and I got an alert for my name and I was in the Daily Mail for the first time which if you're a regular listener to the show you know that that's like the only news source that I read and it's all that's the best big. celebrity like encounters and they don't they're not really fans of me they've been there've been so many chances for them to talk about me they don't care about me but I'm in the Daily Mail because grocery store Joe and I went to Starbucks <laughs> together which was right down the street from our Dancing with the Stars rehearsal space and he was on my season 2 and we went to go get a coffee no we didn't even go together I ran into him there And I saw the paparazzi taking pictures of us. So I just started like smiling, like kind of not smiling, but I knew they were photographing us. Mm. And I knew they'd be like, are they together? Whatever. We were just, we're just friends. And we, he was dating my friend at the time, Kendall. So I go back and I'm like, and the paparazzi were always at Dancing with the Stars outside. And they always are Daily Mail, like they're, they pay Daily Mail Mm -hmm. to put ads in so i walked back to the with the stars and they're snapping pictures of me and i'm confident and i'm wearing like this cute little i look adorable i'm tanned up in the right way my hair's back 
and um having fun with them talking to them and i go in for practice and then these pictures come out when i'm in my trailer and there's a picture of my neck that i'll send to noah <laughs> that i i remember look. this yes i've told this on other things that we've done before so i apologize if this is so redundant to you but um or I, my neck looked like a raptor like it looked like uh like a raptor's like <laughs> when they're yeah. in the kitchen and they're like they hear a pot clang <laughs> and they like a like, crocodile's <laughs> tail yeah yes where it's like it's just all bunches up and it's like line 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 it looked like barbara corcoran from shark tank like i looked like the tree, neck of a you'd be like eighty thousand years old <laughs> yes yeah dude it it was it's just such a bad angle and it was because I was too skinny and I I was dehydrated. Do you know how dehydrated skinny people get like that Iggy pop? But like, also tanning will do it too. I've noticed too. Uh, it was tanning really, brings it was out spray creases tan. sometimes. Spray tan will give you those lines creases, on your yeah. neck sometimes because it beads up. It's just the worst angle. And I was already depressed and tired and everything. And so I just went into a fucking spiral. And I, this, you've seen me spiral like this. Yeah, this was I'm at a time in my life stars. when I wasn't, <laughs> that, that was a <laughs> dance move I did. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was my signature move on Dancing with the Stars was the, s- the downward, downward spiral. spiral. <laughs> That's so funny. That's when they you call spun around. Laser write that down. down. There. <laughs> when you would spin around and, and and hate yourself. Oh my god, <laughs> write that down. I want to put that in my act when I talk about Dancing with the Stars someday. My signature dance move was the downward spiral. Um, that's really good. Thank you guys. Um, so I cried and I was like, uh, you know. I tend to, or I used to tend to, say things about myself that, around other friends that loved me, that they would negate and be like, no, Nick, you're beautiful, or mm. no, that's not right. I, was, I remember I sent the screenshot to Anya, because Anya's very, like, knows body stuff and, like, analyzes, and I'm like, Anya, there's no way around this. Like, my neck is disgusting. And Anya was like, it's because you're too skinny, dude. It's like, you're, it's because you're thin. That's what skin does when it's thin and it doesn't have any fat to like not make it wrinkle up like that. It's like right. that would be like on a 12 year old that was that skinny. And I was just like, no, I, you're wrong. And um, I'm crying and, and I'm just like, Carl, I like my neck is so disgusting. I'm zooming in on it. And she's like, there are things you can do to fix it. There are lasers. <laughs> like you can get surgery. Nikki, you are making so much money on this season. If you think about it, we can go immediately as soon as you're done with the show, babe. It's, you can fix it. And I'm just like, that's not what the, the, the advice. That's trying to I'm, offer solution. But that's why you're like my mom to me in yeah, some ways. Because I love that. When, my mo- when I used to say that I was like fat and ugly to my mom, my mom would be like, just be happy with what God gave you. Yeah. Or like go on a diet then. Like it wouldn't be like, you're crazy. You're There's beautiful. There's something beautiful in that rather <laughs> than just lie to you. No, I, well, it's not a lie to say you're beautiful and that that is a bad angle. But Carlisle just, her truth was just fix it. You've got yeah. money for yeah. things. Because to me, that's my truth because you're so lucky you can do the that's things. That's what she was just saying. You, you have, have the money. If like, I had your money, you know what I would do. And so that's why right after Dancing with the Stars, I went to Simon Norian and I spent thirty thousand dollars on injections it. and yeah right you were like just do it <laughs> yeah just to, for your decolletage to, is it an extra 10 grand just do it and my my business manager's calling being like what are you doing in beverly hills right now i'm like i'm just like i'm just this is for myself i need to do this carlisle's like in my head so but the the real kicker of this so then i'm like trying i'm like okay i guess this isn't gonna get carlisle to give me sympathy I'll just say the worst thing. She doubled down on it. And so then I remember just like being so depressed. And I was like, Carlisle, I seriously like aging is like awful. Like if this is the way I am now at the age of 34, whatever I was at the time, I was like, I just think I'm like, I'm probably just going to have to kill myself someday. I just like feel like that's how I'm going to go. Like I'm just going to have to kill myself one day. And I kind of just like looked over at her to be like, what are you going to do with that? And she just goes. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I'm like, what? And she goes, except mine's going to be murder suicide. Mm. And I was like, oh my God. And it made me laugh so hard that it sat me out of it. And we left instead of went to the Foo Fighters concert. She's like, Nikki, you got so much money. You could just kill a man and then kill yourself. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, or we, get a man killed, Nikki. We never explained the murder suicide. It wasn't yeah. that I was gonna murder her. It was because I was dating a guy at the time. She's gonna murder someone else. Yes. I, yeah, I was fantasizing about she murdering had homicidal him. fantasy. Not that I would ever, but, but I, I she definitely so, could have. I was yes. so at the time. angry. She One time I told her, if my else. neck was like yours, Nikki, I would have killed I my boyfriend Carlo. a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> If I had your neck she can all them. wrinkly and crocodile just use a laser to kill yourself. 
Um, she, it's I just an told, extra 20 grand. I once told Carlisle, and this is all out of love, that I was like, because she was, she's been, just as much as I've been crazy, she's been crazy, and we've both oh, yeah. seen each other at like bad moments. And oh, I once yeah. told Carlisle, like, you know, sometimes I feel a little scared that you, like, will kill me or something. Like, if, you, if I hurt you in a bad, if I, like, if some if I fire because you because I told her about the guy and yeah, this fantasy yeah. that I had yeah, yeah, who but, had blonde hair and blue eyes. But you're Mickey. allowed yeah. to have if you have homicidal <laughs> fantasies, which a lot of people do. By the way, no one talks about it, but people do think about killing Only people about all the time. Only about this one guy I did. Just no, to be there's clear. been two, and um, <laughs> okay. but. It was so cute because I go, Carlisle, like sometimes I feel like you will Selena me, you know, like yes. you are like, I you, see that if I, hurt, if I, if I decide I don't want to be friends with you because you, you know, you're a drug at like whatever. If I decide to make space, because <laughs> no, at the time she was a drug, <laughs> you were addicted to pot and yes. it was not good for our relationship or yeah. any relationship. Yes. At some point when your friend is suffering, you being there for them is not helping them. You have to pull away. So I right. was kind of scared. Like if I pull away from you at any point, could you murder me? Mm-hmm. And uh, and that was a like ser- talented Mr. Ripley. The fact that I was able to ask her that shows you that I'm not actually that scared of her. But I wanted yeah. reassurance, and she goes, "Oh my God, no! I only I only dream about killing people that I've slept with. Nikki. It's always a romantic thing. It's never friendship." And I was like, "Oh, okay, then we're fine." Like I literally was like, "Okay, I'll just never hook up with you." <laughs> There was a time too whenever we were doing. You I'm sure up. Selena's manager told her that she was going to kill her too. When we were doing, you know what I mean? Like I, I'm pretty sure she was like, no, oh no. I bet, I bet it wasn't talked about <laughs> in that episode. <laughs> yeah, no, Ablo. Listen, uh, uh, I, I don't, I would not be friends with someone who I thought. But I, there was a moment where I was like, there's a little part of me that since you've told me this yeah. thing, and I'm not trying to push, rub it in your face, like don't tell me these things anymore. But I just want to be honest with you. Yeah. Will you just assure me? And she goes, No, I'll get laser. She, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll get. She did give me the assurance I needed for that because I don't think you're alone. If you've also had homicidal fantasies out there because it's okay to talk about suicide because it's yourself. Right. Some, it's more palatable for people. But a lot of people have homicidal fantasies, including um, Ricky Gervais's character in Afterlife. Well, I, yeah. oh, I saw Jen- a Jennifer Lawrence interview where she was on a lie detector. And for no reason, she just threw out, like sometimes when I'm near a subway, I think about throwing people on the tracks. Yeah. And then it, the lie detector said, yeah. Yeah. And, and uh that's a thought that she's like that's a horrible thought but these are real thoughts but if you're honest about them yeah. and in a in a you know constructive way i think that it frees you like Harlow has said to me before like oh my god i'm really upset that i told all this stuff to this one person because they have it on me now and like if i ever fuck up they can use it against me and i go the things that are, you have told this person that you think could ruin you i think i know all of those things and to me if you own them in a way that you can on stage or on a podcast, they have nothing on you. Mm-hmm. And nothing that you Eight thought in your head yeah. is wrong. It's your your actions might have been like wrong. But as long as you can atone for them and say, I don't want to do those anymore or like spin it into like, that was funny. And by the way, the things you've done, none of it's been like morally deplorable or like something that you would be in prison for. So right, like, right. I You're just think that that's your bar. superpower. <laughs> You you have an excuse. You were raised inside. Just, just to button up the Dancing with the Stars thing, though, there was a time on You Up whenever uh, you were about to, you couldn't be on the show because you were on Dancing with the Stars. And I just kept being like, y'all need to vote. The number is this. And I kept saying the number over and over. And Ben Glebe was the guest. And he was like, Carlisle, why do I feel like you're going to kill Nikki and like wear her skin? <laughs> you wouldn't wear her neck skin. <laughs> I would because I would just get lasers. I could get lasers on it. And I would. Give, I us would. An Andrew, give us an Andrew, Carlisle. Andrew! Welcome back to the show. This is a fun one. We're doing all fan threats today. Uh, Noah, I'm sure you have a ton for us. Can I start with the one that I got? Yes. And then we can go to the voice memos. Um, by the way, everyone that's been tuning into the Instagram lives, we've had so much fun with you. The so besties fun. are fucking awesome. I can't even stand how cool you guys are. You just keep getting better and better. Um, and that's not me, you know, kissing your ass. You're just so supportive and sweet, and I'm so grateful for you. Um, this is from Delaney. Hi, bestie. This is Lane, but I just wanted to reach out and say how sorry I am for your loss. It's very clear how much Bob Saget meant to you. I just wanted ad- to additionally say, and this is this is not me just getting a bunch of accolades for how much Bob liked me or whatever. I want everyone to listen up because this is really important. 
and I think we can all learn from this. I just wanted to say additional. I just wanted to additionally say you should never feel bad for grieving a death of an acquaintance or even a celebrity you've never met. Met. A few years ago, my dad died at only 55, and after that, I would be filled with rage when people were upset when someone they didn't know or barely knew died because um, there was no way it could be as bad as losing your dad when you're 21. Then my favorite musical artist, Mac Miller, died, mm. and I was devastated. I never met him, never even had the pleasure of seeing him in concert, but the grief I felt over his death was similar to my dad's death. It really showed me that grief can hit people in different ways. And just because you didn't personally know someone doesn't mean you can't be affected by their death in a big way. Anyways, I am down. I am now rambling. I appreciate you in the podcast. It's really helped me every day. J -j 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 Jackie Chan. Yeah. Um, that was awesome to read yeah. because that was from someone who used to. F I love a change of heart. Yeah, it's great. I love a bestie that could share a change of heart where they like thought some way and then thought the other way. And um, I just loved hearing that. Thank you so much, Delaney. Um, I want to share one more real quick that I got. And no one ever says like, oh, you're grieving over your dad. You're making it about you. Like no one ever mm -mm. says that. No. You know what I mean? It's like it's yeah. someone that they don't think you're connected to. You weren't to. as close to dad as I was. And it's like your mom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I knew him longer. <laughs> I had sex with him. Did you? Yes. <laughs> oh, wait, what? <laughs> oh, the truth comes out. Okay, so this is from <laughs> dun, 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 dun. This is from Felina, and she goes by, oh, it's just Fee. Um, hey, you cured my crippling chronic sciatic pain with your recommendation. I appreciate that about you. I spent thousands on physical therapy, inversion tables, TENS units, TNS. It's like a Several, acronym. So. Et cetera, over the past four years. And it turns out I was psychosomatically giving myself piriformis Agency. syndrome by subconsciously clenching muscles after trauma. Quite odd that my body did that. Anyway, you rock. Thank you. Um, love, love that message. So um, again, check out the book Healing Back Pain Healing if you want to look pain. into um, not just back pain, any kind of chronic pain you have that might be exacerbated by uh, a, a syndrome called TMS, which is um, an actual thing that makes your brain uh, circuit trauma and anxiety to different nerves to give you pain that you shouldn't be experiencing. Noah, what do you have for <laughs> Doesn't sound like it. Just sounds yeah, like it sounds like another thing. Too that. much sarcasm. <laughs> Too much sciatic pain. <laughs> Too much of this. Okay, first message <laughs> comes from Rihanna. Whoa, first ever Rihanna I've heard wow. of. Wow. Hey, She's Nikki, amazing. Noah, and Andrew, I'm so excited to be calling in right now. Yes. Um, Nikki, you asked me to share my experience with body positivity and shrooms and LSD. Yes. Um, I just remember on my first trip, this epiphany of looking down at my legs and thinking they don't look like much, but they do so much. Um, so I've had this major mindset shift from aesthetics to function um, that's really sustained um, throughout the years over all my trips. Um, I don't do it anymore, but it's uh, an amazing epiphany that I had that's just seared into my brain. It that. just seems so silly to be worrying about um, ce cellulite and dimples when my legs can still get me up mountains. Um, yeah. I'm wondering if anyone else has had that experience uh, of body acceptance with those substances, if that's maybe one of those shared experiences people have mm. with those. Um, real quick, Nikki, I just wanted to say I've been listening to you since the U Up days. Um, I got to see you in Denver for your taping, and it, I just felt like the biggest proud little sister um, in the crowd that night. I had no idea that was for your special. It was just Aww. awesome. Um, thank you, three, for what you do for a bunch of strangers every day. You're all awesome. Squirt, squirt. Oh, my God. Hey. Squirt, squirt. Mm. Squirt, squirt. We got the queen of squirt nation right here. Mm -hmm. Carla Forster. Very fitting. Um, Rihanna, thank you so much. She was, I believe she was on, that was from last night, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she was on my Instagram live and we were really having a discussion on there about body positivity and like fat acceptance and there were uh, a lot of fat besties in there t talking about their experience as a fat person and it was really awesome. We were just, it was it was like a jam sesh about uh, our bodies and like how we feel, addiction. Mm -hmm. Carla was talking about being uh, 80, 83 today. Days. Well, by the time they hear this, it'll be 84. 84 days sober. Mm. Well, God willing. Uh, <laughs> tonight, who knows? <laughs> after we've admitted that you're homicidal, does it, who knows what's going to happen after this. But um, from pot and from pot and alcohol. Yes. And, awesome. um, All the things. Yeah, That's great. congrats. Thank and, you. Um, it was just great. And, and I think Rihanna had shared in the chat that she had a moment with mushrooms or LSD that where she had body acceptance and I was like, please call into the, 
podcast and share that. That's I really do think that sometimes even when I see people who when I look at obese people that are really struggling to walk, I just marvel at how they are able to carry all of that around. You've carried you've had a backpack on before that's really heavy and like how much different mm-hmm. it is to walk around with that than not that their bodies are so strong to be carrying that around and to be carrying it around knowing that people are judging Mm -hmm. them. Like fat people really are so strong both physically and emotionally. And I, I heard so much yesterday that made me so happy from people who, you know, struggle being fat and struggle with how people interpret it, but who still love themselves. And I definitely like, Whenever I get into a negative place about a body part or feeling like it's fat or pale or flat, whatever the fuck, um, yeah, remember that remembering that it's functioning and is such a, a a gift, and that's such a good epiphany to have. And um, yeah, I just want to I want to talk more about that stuff in in our Instagram lives. It was just such a great like a, it was almost like a. 12 step pr- yeah. meeting. It yeah, makes me it think really like, like a lot of people take things for granted until it's removed. You know, like mm-hmm. let's say you, you, you're you mad about your legs being a little chubby and then the next day you get in a car wreck and you can't use your legs and yeah. you're like, why do, like that's when you would have the realization, like have it now, f- you know, How before, you know, I think about my, like my mom with her stuff yeah. and like she has like oxygen in her nose and she couldn't be any like, she walks around with an oxygen tank. Like, she has a stroller for it. And, like, I think about, like, like, oh, that's she's weak physically. But God, is it, like, gives me a new appreciation for her to, like, go out in public like that. Knowing people who are, like, yes. you know, see, or even if they're not talking, like, yes, it's kind of like the thing that you're saying. I but, really think we need to start seeing people that, you know, are especially fat people. Like, it changed my mindset one day when I was just, like, I saw a really obese person struggling to walk, like, you know, just very slow, purposeful steps. Like, every step was, like, effort. And I was like, and you can say all you want, like, they chose to get that way. No one chooses to get that way. No No. one wants to be that way. So shut up with your, you stop eating or whatever it is. Shut the fuck up. the one thing you can change. If you, if you, if it isn't. And and food is a real, no, I know. And food is a real addiction. And anyone who says otherwise is so stupid and you should feel sorry for them for being so dumb. Um, but when I see a fat person, I don't feel so, you know, there is a part of me that's like, oh, that's an addict because I've been there and, and, and a lot of times they're not. But if you're morbidly obese, and I know that they don't even like that word, but if you're in a be- obese in a way that you might be confined to a wheelchair or not be able to walk really well, um, you didn't choose to be that way. You are addicted to a substance that is not regulated, that is completely, you know, uh, everyone it's advertised to you constantly. It's not illegal. So easy to and get. you have to do it. And Everybody have... has to eat. Yeah, that's the difficult thing. And if you relate to anything I'm saying, I always extend this. Please write to me in my DMs and capitalize. Don't don't share your whole story, but say, you know, um, just write uh uh attention Nikki in all caps, right? And that'll get my attention. But I and I'll I'll gear you towards something that might help, but I really think that everyone out there needs to start seeing people that are walking around, lumbering around with a lot of added weight. A, the ability to go out knowing that kids and people are going to snicker and laugh at you is t- is hard. Mm-hmm. And they're carrying, they're do, they're so strong to be carrying all of that. And they don't, and we shouldn't be like, yeah, you should do the Iron Man. But it's, you, you got to give them some credit for carrying all that weight. It is a fucking lot. And they have just the same amount it's of like muscles on you on do. on an airplane, you know, when they, well, you know, if, anytime I see like an overweight person sitting on an air, and airplane, they're tight. They're tight seats. Yeah. And it's like, they fucking know that th- they're the one dealing with it. Like, I hate yeah. when people are like, if I got to share. If you ever you know? witness someone get like, like, because oh, I don't know no besties would do this, but if you ever witness someone being a bitch about someone being fat on an airplane and having to sit next to them, you kick that person's chair all through the flight. <laughs> Fuck that person. And, uh, and granted, the fat person probably will be in a part of that chair too. Yes, that's uh, true. But let's be honest. But that person um, is so disgusting yeah. to me. And that's how they'll know you support them. They'll feel the, yeah. <laughs> the vibrations yes. of you kicking the seat. Well, that you're just despicable if you ever make it's, anyone feel bad about make, their physical uh, presence. It does make me like think, like, why I have small hands? Like, why do I have... 
I'm not, why, why, what's good about that? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. where are my alien thumbs? Like, maybe if I'm hitchhiking, someone will stop well, guess what? more because they're alien like. Or my thick eyebrows your alien are thumbs good because are it funny. keeps thing out of my eyes. Your thumbs are funny. <laughs> and it's made you feel less than in the, in the past, which has made you feel, be funny and cooler. Yeah, it's you just fun. Yeah, no, I know. It's just interesting to look at you, not just with a functionality, but like, what is it giving why, you? Yeah, what is it giving you? You mm-hmm. know? Because we're all in the bodies that we have. Because those are the bodies that we were meant to have. And you know why that's true? Because you have that body. Well, wait a second, Carlisle. Then how do I get you to stop saying, we were watching Paris Hilton show last night. And I'm like, God, you look like Paris so much. Like, Carla is so, so gorgeous. And recently has been just like popping. I think it's just like not smoking weed and just, you just like look stunning to me. And I'm never going to have a sexual relationship with you because you might murder me. But <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that what about you when you say, yeah, except my dark circles under my eyes. She well, would look the same except that. I do think that's the the weed fading out of me. I think that's still my disdain for being a pothead for so long. Okay. So maybe I'll, I'll learn to work. I haven't heard that. you cough once. Yeah, the cough is gone. I had COVID and I didn't cough. I yes. Mean, that's wild. Okay, let's you get had to the a next cough that was anthrax. like, sounded like a seal being beaten. Yes, we need to get to the next. She did yeah, sound like consumption. Uh, yeah, bonk off. <laughs> what was it called? Oh, okay, yeah, bonk off. let's get to our first um, or our second. Um, yeah. Message. Okay. So on the topic of your IG live, here's an anonymous message. Mm. Hi guys. So I'm gonna keep this anonymous. Um, I love when you guys go live on your Instagram. I try to catch it as often as possible. Um, and a few days ago, Nikki was playing guitar and I had my AirPod in, I was watching on my iPad and I kind of had it away from me, but I was scrolling through whatever on my phone and my husband came up behind me and got a little handsy. One thing led to another. I still had one AirPod in and my husband has no idea that we did things while I had an AirPod in. I did eventually take it out, but. Oh my god, I just thought it was so funny. I had to tell you guys. And um yeah. I don't, I don't That's know. awesome. Why am I telling you? I don't know. I love you. That's it. I love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill. That's a good one. Good. Um Anonymous, thank you so much. I love that someone had sex to me struggling to play Dave Matthews. Sex music. So cute. Oh, thanks for that. That's so awesome. Um, anonymous. And I love, like, please feel free to leave us a message anytime like that about anything. And it's so adorable. And if she was laughing, it was your husband's penis. It was not Nikki. <laughs> yeah. Nikki was not being funny. It was definitely his I'm penis. I'm never funny yeah. on those. I'm so sincere. It's, it's <laughs> uncomfortable. Um, all right, Noah, what's the next one? Okay, next one comes from Kristen. Hey, Nikki, Noah, and Andrew, this is your bestie, Kristen from Chicago, and I wanted to call myself on a cuh. I was flying back home, and before my flight, I downloaded the latest season of the stand-ups to watch on my iPad, and Nikki, I know that you're on season one. You were great, and um, I was thinking back to... One episode where, Nikki, you were describing a girl reading her book on the train and just like (laughs) laughing to herself at, you know, something she just read. And I was kind of doing that, too, on the plane when I was watching the stand-ups. I would just have a little giggle here and there. And yes, I was feeling annoyed for the people around me who (laughs) just had to hear me giggle. And I know that's annoying, but you know, it's what I wanted to watch on the flight home. And yep, just wanted to share that with y'all. Jack Skellington. Jack Skellington. Um, Wait, what was her name? Was Kristen? Kristen. I I I delight when people are laughing on a plane. I don't think that's could at all. It's not could. I think it's only could if she was watching. If you're reading a book and you want people to like know that you're getting like, oh my god, I'm enjoying this book so much. It's making me laugh. Jane Austen, her (laughs) wry wit. Oh, she was ahead of her time. That (laughs) bothers me. But if it's like you're watching stand up, I love when people on a plane are laughing to themselves, like, and they're trying not to. They're like, like they're trying to like keep it cool. I think it's adorable and it it makes me laugh. If have you ever seen those videos where people start laughing and then everyone on the train is laughing by the oh, end of it? No. Because Love laughter that. is contagious yeah. for no reason. 
Um, so keep doing that. I love it. It is like, it depends on what show you're watching, too. If you're watching, yeah. like, I don't know, what's like a, a, a comedy that's like only <laughs> highbrow? Like, if you're watching, like, I don't know. I can't really think of one right now that just shows you, like, how much I don't. No, if you're la- laughing at, like, um, you know, uh, a Wes Anderson film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like and you're like showing everyone holding it up being like, yeah. have you seen this one from his odd collection from... Yeah, if you're watching it anything from, from college. Watching anything from the Criterion Collection DVD. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, you're watching yeah. like a Truffaut or a fucking... Then it's K. But if you're watching I can't think of any the star, you know, the stand-ups, whatever, which is... You know. Yeah, and I want to know who you were laughing at, who you liked most on there, and you don't need to include I f- me. I feel bad about... The latest I watched some of it. The crowd was like shit. It was it was Just, they need to the pump energy it in the up. room was like they can always pump it up. Yeah, I know they should. My special at the Denver one. The first taping was like low end, and then um, the Gee. second the second NRG is my uh, uh, initials. Oh my manager's calling me that's either bad pick it or up, good pick it up, pick it up, no pick no, it no, up. no 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 why are we fine pick it up put on because he's not gonna tell he's not gonna tell me anything yes, he's he not will. the type yes, of no he's yeah. not no he's not alex he's no he's not good friend alex no. you he's, booked it no it's either bad news or good news um you are the lead in the new ben affleck so, movie <laughs> what if he was like i'm letting you go <laughs> I'm letting that would be hilarious no. um but anyway yeah the second crowd was great energy and you watch you watch it and my special end uh, there's just a desperate we you you need more laughter and it'll sound like I'm it'll sound so much better even though my part will be the same laughter really does convince it changes you changes everything in that book I was reading about psychology of influence like canned laughter is everything in TV shows everything and it's really necessary uh, and has shows are not Big Bang Theory would not exist if it were shot like The Office. Yeah, right. probably it needs that God, laugh track no. and it teaches people where to laugh and we all fall for it. No one's no one's uh, can out trick it. It's subconscious. Let's get to the next one so I can get this call from my manager. <laughs> yeah, I'm letting kinda, me know I'm, my life is about to change. Yeah. <laughs> OK, we'll do this one and then we'll go to break. Great. OK, so here's Turns one. Cabo's gone in a tsunami. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, this next so one we're... comes from Jay. Ah, Jay. Hey, Nikki fam, Jay oh. here, and I'm listening to the episode with Anya Marina, which I love. It reminds me back in the You Up Serious days. I literally leased a new car, started listening to your radio show, and when the le- the serious three-month trial was up, I got it just to keep listening. Um, and I wanted to talk about Andrew's um, several discussion and i think i understand what he's saying i okay. think he means that when you say a small amount of something in a smaller unit it's a large amount so if you say like s- several hours that's a lot of minutes but nobody uses it that way mm-hmm. like several hours is interchangeable with a lot of minutes but <gasps> nobody would say a lot of minutes they would just say several hours oh. so in honor of Andrew, I think the next time somebody texts you and says, how far away are you? And you're like five minutes away. Just text back and say, oh, I'm a lot of seconds away. I'm a lot of, <laughs> yes. Is that you. what you Thank mean? You. Yeah, that's definitely on par with what I was trying so, to like, address. So like if you're saying he was in space for several minutes, that still doesn't help the space thing that got us started. I went there kind of the other day of like what he was saying and that makes more sense. But Originally, I did think several just meant a lot. Like yeah. no matter what yes. it was, no matter what you're, you. But were wrong. then I was wrong, very wrong <laughs> up top. But then he has a good point. I, lo- yeah. I love the Someone way he just wrote phrased me it. Several thousand miles away. That's a lot of miles because it's right. Several it's thousand. Several, but the several is what it's like. A couple thousand miles away is a, fa- a lot too. But it's still two thousand miles. Yes. So yeah. in my mind, though, several didn't. In that case, if it's several thousand miles away, yeah, it a, could be four or five because that's still a ton. Right, that's still a ton. Right. But it's... <laughs> but of, What are you doing over there? I'm trying to <laughs> flatten out my eye bags and it looked like I was doing something racially yeah, insensitive. Was, was, <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, several... Th- we've, we could talk all day about this, but you're right. Like, But that's hilarious to go... You know, one of something is small, unless you say one million, then of course it's big. It's yes. Like, but the argument is not if one is a big amount or not. One is a small amount because it's one. But if you're talking about one and then a 
amount of something, of course it's going to be a lot in some. Okay, let's take a break and <laughs> we'll not get back to this when we come back. All right, we're back. Let's get to more fan thrax. Do you think I'd be able to do that? Palma basketball? No, I would not think you were able to do that. My See, little, that's what your little hands are good for. Because they get right in the crease. Ah, <laughs> that's a trick. Okay, here's a story from Cali. Cali. From California? Hi, Nikki. It's your girl Cali from Mississippi, Southern Yeehaw. Um, Carmel. You were talking about in this latest episode the birds, the shoe bird, the shoe box bird. I don't oh, know. yeah. This triggered a, like literally a suppressed memory in my brain about vultures. And if you have not heard of vultures, please, God, look it up. Horrifying. Um, I was a sophomore in college. I went to Kroger and got a rotisserie chicken to try a new, new little recipe. I was trying to be domestic. Oh, so birds. Uh, I had to pull all the chicken off the bone. Then I didn't know what to do with the bone besides, you know, risk missing garbage day. So mm-hmm. I threw the uh, chicken bone off like this entire ass chicken bone off of my balcony. I lived in an apartment that faced the woods, threw it off there. No big deal. Next day I was on the phone way? and noticed that like 10 demonic ass looking vultures, vulture birds were like gnawing at this bone. It literally triggered a panic attack. I went to hide in my closet and was like crying like a oh five God. year old. And ever since then I've Why? had a, a horror, like a, an autonomic response <laughs> Two birds. Please look up a vulture. It is definitely Girl, scarier than the shoe bird. Vultures Shoebox look bird. like shoe bird. Whatever you did, not in Mississippi. Um, you don't talked about, but God, I related so much to that, and love you. It was Girl. just traumatizing, and she's so cute. Maybe I need to talk about in therapy. I'm just so grateful for your freaking podcast, and I love oh, you, I love and you. Andrew, and everyone oh, so much, you so much. Oh my God, that is so funny. I love a story that involves a balcony, the woods, a ch- a, an, an bone, ass chicken bone, rotisserie chicken, and uh, some vultures in a closet. An atomic? What this was reminds the word me of my used? birth story. <laughs> 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 well, you were thrown I, off a balcony and eaten by vultures. It's so funny that she thinks we don't know what vultures are. Is anyone struggling to conjure a vulture in their in their mind? Like, I'm growing big in the south. I think you don't like. I think she thinks how many vultures have you seen in your life in a group? Because I've seen a lot. I could draw one right now. It has a they're a scary bird. It it arches over. It has like a white tuft around its like the base of its giraffe neck, and it has like a brown body. And yeah, they prey on like corpses. That's the thing. They'll fly around something that might die. I know. So then that's why they're scary. That's why it's scary. Because then you're like, if you see vulture, death. Am I dying? Yeah. So then it um, makes you think of death and morbidity. Well, we've got another person on the show who is uh, has a aviophobia. Um, I th- I don't know a birdophobia, and that's Noah. Noah hates birds too. But her last name's Aviar. I know it's well, so ironic. I hate a specific bird, just Which like one? Callie does. Pigeons, and like oh. New York City pigeons. Well, I guess like city pigeons because they have pigeons here in Tucson, and they're like way less gross. Mm. Like those it's a similar vulture esque. A pigeon is what, like a. What is it about the pigeon though? Are you scared it's gonna? It's like flying rats in New York, right? Well, it comes. So many. It stems from a dream that I had, mm. where a pigeon was attacking me on King's Highway, and then I was walking to junior high school. I was walking under the Carvel awning, and a pigeon came down, and I had to swat it away. And after that, I was terrified of them. And it was a dream. At first, it was a dream, and then it became reality. Okay, okay. okay. That makes no that's... sense, but they creep Listen, me out. No, I get it. I get it. You I touched just... it. You felt it. Like I there's hope a that difference. You don't hate birds in general, but I think some people do. I Look, lo- I have I... bird feeders all over in the yard because I yeah. love them. Oh, good. I uh, I'm not afraid of birds, and I've been flogged by a chicken before. What does that mean? <gasps> it means whenever they get on top of your head and they flap their wings oh, and flog don't tell you. This to <gasps> because Noah and our listen, listener. no, Is your Noah, you would story? freak out. I would. My my aunt and uncle had a bunch of chickens out in the yard one time, and I was like, I want to take one home. And my uncle Mike said, he goes, if you can catch one, you can take it home. And I got uh, out that's there, nice of and I started Aww. running around. And I did catch one, and we did take it home. Is it called flogging? It's called flogging. flogging. Yeah. So, so when Flo- you were trying flogging. to catch one, his buddy flogged his your His buddy ass? Yeah, came and flogged me, but I didn't care. I kept right did on. Did you kill it? I brought it one home. home. I didn't kill it. We brought it home. We put it in a cage in the backyard. We named it Rebel. 
Um, not after the Confederacy, after the Ole Miss football team. Com- comedian. <laughs> yeah, Reverend, Reverend Wilson. Um, after the Ole Miss football team, before I get canceled. Um, and then we kept it in the cage for a while, but it was like an open cage, and the neighbor's dog ate it eventually. Aww, yeah, Aww. Luigi killed a uh, chicken once, too. And my sister had a coop, and he killed a yeah. chicken. Didn't you, Luigi, you dumb dumb. <laughs> um, all right, let's let's uh, let's get to a couple more fan No. Wow. The dog ate him. Okay, here's one from Constance. That's an amazing story. Hey, guys. Um, I just wanted to say that I finally got to finish the episode on Monday um, called Too Much Rain. I was super excited about that episode because... It was me. I was the somebody who asked you live the other night to say Jack Skellington, and I was so hopeful that you would. Well, I um, listened to the episode, and I wanted to connect also because I have tinnitus. I woke up a couple of years ago without any hearing in my left ear, and now I constantly hear a constant screechy sound, and I have to listen to what I like brown or pink noise it really helps well anyway as i was um driving and i heard you say jack skellington i had to look so cool because i started (laughs) fist pumping as i drove yes pumping seriously i have no idea where that came from anyway i just want to end by saying i love all three of you and despite the fact that i used to hate when I heard grown women call their friends besties, I am now beyond proud to say that I am one. Anyway, thanks for all the swells. Thanks, girl. Oh, oh my God, Constance, that's so funny. I used to hate besties too. Well, that, that's that's kind of why we ironically. did that. Yeah. I know, but I don't think anyone, I don't know if I we know. ever really discussed that on the pod, but we chose besties because it's everywhere. And then yes. it was ironic to and because make it specific. We talk about, we talk like we're, like to our best friends and it yeah. might have started as best friends and then went to best no it was always besties it was always best yeah it, I f- no, no do you remember the origin yeah we we were we wanted to um you know like have like an audience name and we did come up with best friends and then yeah. you change it to besties and i think it's just like a tribute to swifties best friends oh, all that's that. right yeah. okay jammed into yeah one. okay cool and you i liked it, it because i to be honest, I like best friends more than besties because besties does have like that like weird yes. like besties. Yeah, but I mean, but it is so fun because everyone's like the glazer heads, the the yeah. you know the turkey faces. Mm-hmm. It's always so specific. Yeah, and it is fun because it's and your own thing. Is, um, the most yeah people at meet and greets when they're like I'm a bestie and I'm like Angel she's a bestie like people who don't know what we're talking about must be like what the fuck yeah everyone's a fucking bestie now <laughs> yeah. like everyone's a bestie yeah, yeah, that's yeah. why it's funny but we're our own kind of and to say be- I'm a bestie is different than saying I'm your bestie or uh, you know yeah. like A it makes it different I think enough it does it's still very but very Constance, generic did but, you also just hear that someone else said jack skellington yeah, that was when they crazy. signed off i thought that was pro- i literally thought of you because i was like oh i bet that was the girl who told me to say jack skellington that but it was, was actually you girl. that is so ironic oh my god i hope you fist pounded in your car doubly <laughs> el mano yourself yeah what call back to getting fisted el mano Remember we it changed it up because fist sounds Tuesday's too strong. Show. What was that? Did we call change it to El Mano? Yeah. Oh, I don't remember that. That was yesterday. <laughs> well, I remember the fisting <laughs> conversation, but I don't remember the El Mano part. Because we wanted to not sound so harsh. Oh, I didn't. Re- what does El Mano mean? It's hand in Spanish. Oh, got it. <laughs> oh, hermano. Uh, that's brother. Arrested Development. Fisty right. sounds kind of cute. Oh, a fisty. I'm a fisty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's think about it. I think it sounds too sexual. The word fist. No, not as like as our fans. I'm just saying. Oh, I got a fisty last. Oh, a fisty. Night. Oh, as that sounds to, cute. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Okay, let's change that. Final thought. <laughs> All right. So here's one from Ben, and he'll probably love that we're playing this. What's up, No Drewki? My name is Ben. Uh, I'm from Arkansas, and I love the podcast so much. I I show people constantly, um, and listen all the time. Um, but you guys actually inspired me to create a podcast of my own. And, um, I sing for like a rock slash metal band or whatever. Um, and so I started a podcast with, uh, one of my bandmates and, um, 
We just recorded our first episode, and we also just got our intro back. I knew we had to have a sick intro because when I listened to like the Nikki Glazer podcast, I, I'm so in love with the ooh, 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 ooh. and I was Aww. like, we got to have something that like catches people at the beginning that's super sick Aww. and catchy. Um, and so I just wanted to play this for you guys real quick and uh, just express my appreciation for the podcast and. Um, everything that you guys have helped me with oh welcome God. to the first ever episode of bandmates Band <laughs> we've been wanting i wow. mean that guy got up there man that was incredible Band <laughs> Bad I mean, that's like it's very. It's great, and oh, I like I a one, it. like a two word. Just hey, why get don't into you guys it. give um, Ben and bandmates a, a subscribe? Yeah, check, the support of new podcasts. And if you don't like it, you can always unsubscribe. But why not just uh, try it yeah, out? Check them out. Nice, Ben. Thank you so much. That was so sweet. I'm so glad you're doing a podcast. It's cool. Um, last night I went live on Instagram after we did our like body positive one, and I was playing guitar a little bit to practice and. Um, Tanner Wally, my friend who's been on You Up and is a big fan of the the show, and and you, he even wrote me early on the day when you were on our Instagram live. He wrote me, he texted me, and was like, "Does Andrew need more besties?" Because I'm a I'm obsessed with him, and I was Aww. like, "Oh, he would love to be friends with you." Tanner's awesome, but uh, Tanner said to me, "Oh, I'm about to go live on my Instagram. You inspired me," and he is a great musician, singer, songwriter, and I was like, and it was funny because I was about to go live with guitar but i was worried that tanner would be watching and i'm so nervous to perform in front of people that are better than me at guitar especially guitar singing whatever um and he is at both but i said um funny i'm about to go live too and i was thinking how much i didn't i was almost going to block you because i didn't want you watching me so why don't you go live and will you save it so i can watch it later and we'll go live at the same time and that way you can't watch mine And he's like no i'll wait to do it i'll watch yours and i'm like no you didn't hear me don't yeah. watch mine and he's like but i love it you're so good and i'm like no, it's, and then he ended up going on mine, but it's cool because he's going to start doing lives because he was inspired by yeah. me doing it. I think anyone that has a musical talent or any talent, my dad, I'm always like, dad, you love performing. You can't do shows all the time. You're mostly performing at nursing homes. Go live on Instagram and get a little bit of a following. Plus, well, you have to practice anyway, so you might as well practice. It's in great front to of practice. We well, should. Crowd. You should like go over there maybe once a week and go live with him on yours, and then he'll feel like it's an actual real crowd. Well, the thing is, no, I did that. We went live yeah, last yeah, night no, and I, he played, uh, but um, it was such bad Wi-Fi that it didn't work out. But um, we're gonna do it. I'm gonna there's have a, him play there's a, a singer that's. I don't know how I like probably just stalking Instagram somehow, but like figured out he's a big fan of yours. Who? Because maybe he tagged the pod or something. I can't. He was on American Idol. Uh, like oh maybe, yeah, um, um, Casey? Constantine. No, Casey something. Oh really? It's a guy, and I was obsessed with him on the show. It was like back. Casey like C A S E Y. I think it's Casey C A S E Y. Casey, um, American Idol. Let's look. Um, Casey Bishop? No, that's a girl. Um, maybe oh. it's not Casey then. I don't know. Uh, There's a guy named Constantine who is a, who is American Idol, big, and who's a big fan, big fan. Mm, I'll look it up. I'll I'll figure it out and I'll bring him up on the tomorrow yeah. maybe oh, or that's next cool. one. It's so fun to but find out when people. It's just wild because I was like obsessed with this dude, like that's on the awesome. show because he was very quirky. He didn't really belong. He was like more like jazz, like. Like, he just didn't belong on that show. Uh -oh. Like, he seemed like an old soul kind of singer. Yeah. Like, anyways. But, yeah. So, shout out to that guy that maybe I'll think <laughs> If anyone knows name. who we're talking about, DM Andrew and let us know. Uh, Carlisle, it's been great to have you here all week. Guys, Carlisle Forster, thank you so much for being here all week. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having me. Follow her, you guys. If you want to go to Supernova in Los Angeles, Carlisle is your ticket in. I'll Literally, she up. will hook it up for you. Um, and you can just DM her on Instagram, Carlisle Forrester, C A R L I S L E Forrester with two R's. Um, and you can follow her on TikTok as well. And also on YouTube, she has a podcast called Here for the Hang. And uh, she'll be starting that up again soon. So give her subscribes, uh, support our friends. Because, uh, yeah, she's great, and um, you're great. We love you. Thanks, girl. It was awesome to have you here the, all week. And so don't be kuh. Don't kill anyone out there, Carlisle. <laughs> and Jack, Jack Lemon. Skeletons that Carlisle murdered. <laughs>
Ah.